The date was August 23, 2010. At 10 a.m., a Hong Thai travel services tour bus makes its usual rounds as it stops in front of Kirino Grandstand in Rizal Park as it was picking up riders. It seemed like an ordinary and exciting day for these tourists and business as usual for Hong Thai travel services. Little did they know that it would be the beginning of what would be one of the biggest crises in Philippine history. This is the case of the man behind the Manila hostage crisis, Rolando Mendoza. Rolando del Rosario Mendoza was born on January 10, 1955 in Naik Cavite. Not much is known about his early life, at least from what could be found from the limited information on the internet. He went on to study at the Philippine College of Criminology. He later went on to graduate with a degree in criminology. In 1981, he joined the Philippine National Police as a patrolman and the rest was history. He quickly rose the ranks and went from a senior inspector all the way to police captain. He was highly decorated by his peers, 17 times for bravery and honor to be exact. On February 1986, Mendoza led a group of policemen that flagged down a van that turned out to be carrying 13 crates full of money, which former Philippine president and dictator Ferdinand Marcos was apparently trying to smuggle out of the country. Mendoza and his team were able to intercept it and later turned the shipment over to authorities. That same year, JCS International declared Mendoza one of the 10 outstanding policemen of the Philippines for his service. Everything till now seems and alludes to the fact that he will resume these good merits and be an honest officer for years to come. But things aren't always what they seem. Sometimes, there are darker sides to people that are only seen when no one is around. Rolando Mendoza is no exception. On the 10th of January 1996, Rolando Mendoza was charged along with Rogelio Talavera, Alberto Trajano, Rico Juarez, and Godofredo Bautista for allegedly participating in the gang rape and robbery of Grace Nodalo, a 17-year-old girl. Not only did they not do anything about it despite having knowledge of the commission of rape, they in fact encouraged Rogelio Talavera who was their errand boy by allegedly telling him to quote, do it quickly thus affording moral aid to Talavera in the execution of the crime of rape to Grace Nodalo. It is alleged that they also conspired and helped one another by taking advantage of their positions as police officers by using force, intimidation, and violence to extort her for 100 pesos afterwards. Rolando Mendoza and Rogelio Talavera were later arraigned as they both entered a plea of not guilty, while the rest remained at large. The case was later dismissed when the complainant failed to show up in court. Fast forward 8 years later on April 9, 2008, a hotel chef named Christian Kalau was visiting his cousin in a Vito Cruz condominium. He parked his car and went up to the building to return a laptop he had borrowed previously. When he came back down, he was approached by Mendoza and four other policemen, claiming he had illegally parked. He was then instructed to open the trunk as they asserted that there were sachets of drugs in there. He demanded to be shown a warrant but was ignored as they forcefully opened the trunk anyway. He was later then taken to an ATM in order to withdraw all his money and give it to the policeman. Unfortunately, he didn't have any money in the ATM, as it was only used by the Mandarin hotel he worked at to deposit his salary in. He went on to request to be drug tested, to which the policeman agreed, before proceeding to then beat him up and forcing him to ingest methamphetamine. They then took him to the precinct and demanded him to pay 200,000 pesos for his release without any charges. He was later released when his friends and relatives went to the police office with the money on his behalf. Kalau later went on to file charges against Mendoza and the policeman, but failed to show up at the first hearing over the fear that he would be killed. He finally followed through with his complaint and following a legal battle that saw Mendoza and the four other policemen suspended. The policemen including Mendoza were finally convicted. Following the conviction, in February 16, 2009, Deputy Ombudsman Gonzalez issued a five-page order dismissing Mendoza and his four other officers. The five policemen responded with a motion for reconsideration and handwritten request from Mendoza, dated March 15 and 22, 2010, for the early resolution of the case. 
before the ombudsman could act on his motion for reconsideration. However, the PNP nevertheless decided to dismiss Mendoza and the four other officers from the service, thus ending his nearly 30-year tenure in the police. With his life ruined and nothing he can do about, Mendoza had to take drastic measures to take back the life that was just or unjustly stripped away from him. On the morning of August 23, 2010, Mendoza boards a Hong Thai Travel Services tour bus. He requests a free ride but was declined by the driver. He then pulls out a weapon, later identified to be an M16 rifle, handcuffs the driver to the steering wheel, and hijacks the bus. He went on to demand that he be reinstated to his previous post with benefits, and claims he was framed. During that time, the bus tour guide calls his agency to inform the customer services manager that their group is being held hostage. Between 11 a.m. and 2 p.m., Mendoza releases some hostages as negotiation commence. At around 2 p.m., Mendoza starts posting messages on the bus window. He posts a message that says, Big mistake to correct a big wrong decision. Big deal will start after 3 p.m. today. At 3 p.m., Negotiators give in to Mendoza's demand to refuel the bus. Mendoza's brother Gregorio talks to Rolando on the phone and asks for an extension of the deadline. At 3.30 p.m., Mendoza posts a message that reads, Media now. Sometime later, Mendoza releases another hostage. Food is then delivered to the hostages as the negotiations are still ongoing. At 6 p.m., a letter from the ombudsman is given to Mendoza denying his request to be reinstated. An hour later, Mendoza's brother, Gregorio, is arrested, causing him to be agitated as he fired warning shots, demanding his brother's release. At around 7.30 p.m., the bus driver, unaware of what actually transpired, escapes and says all the hostages had been killed. Gunshots are later heard from the bus. Mendoza has just shot two hostages. Mendoza then begins shooting the rest of the hostages one by one. With no time left to spare, members of the Special Weapons and Tactics start assault operations. The SWAT team starts to surround the bus. The policemen attempt to break the bus's plexiglass windows with sledgehammers, pulling the door with a rope attached to a police vehicle. It later snapped due to the force. After running out of choices, they throw two canisters of tear gas inside. Mendoza, bothered by the gas, steps out of the bus just in view of the snipers who had taken positions earlier in the day. The rest was history. After everything had settled, there were a total of eight fatalities. What followed were investigations from both the Philippine and Hong Kong governments, public apologies, mass media coverage, and the legacy of what will be remembered forever as one of the worst tragedies in Philippine history.